444 horsepower, 48 grand Model 3 performance. This is the car that Tesla boss Elon Musk boasted was quicker than a BMW M3 with better handling. The car that will beat anything in its class on the track. That is quite some claim, Elon. Time then for a test against the ultimate fast saloons. From Mercedes AMG, the C63S. From Alfa Romeo, the Giulia QB. And of course, from BMW, the M3. First up, a drag race with a difference. We're so used to Teslas being fast in a straight line now, but in my experience, electric cars are really quick off the line. But above 100, they tend to get caught by piston engine cars. So I've made the drag race a bit longer. Half a mile, twice the normal distance, and well outside the usual Tesla stomping ground. takes 3.2 seconds. They're not closing in. I'm still pulling away. Oh no, the Merc's coming back at me. 130, the Merc's coming back at me. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, he just got me at the end. Oh. So it's a win for petrol, but only just, and only north of 120. Let's not forget in the real world, even the fastest saloon wouldn't see which way the Tesla went. This is the traffic light king, this thing. It's an AK-47 disguised as a butter knife. in possibly the coolest Lotus ever made! So these are the numbers. 470 horsepower and it weighs just over half a ton. It's seriously, seriously potent. Behind my head is the iconic F1 engine, the Cosworth DFE, three litres, singing all the way to 10,000 RPM. It's a thing of joy. Honestly, if you told me that one day I'd get to even sit in this thing, I'd never have believed you. But I'm driving it. But that wasn't all the 79 had to give. Because Lotus said I could drive one lap just one lap with the car's revolutionary vacuum-inducing skirts all the way down. Full ground effect mode. Skirts down, the skirts are down. They don't go down very often. Oh, you can feel the downforce even at medium speed. It's just so agile. So let's show the fastest corner at Hethel with the skirts down. Accelerating in third, fourth, fifth gear now, skirts down. Turn it in quicker than I had before. Oh! There you go! Ground effect! Ground effect! And now there's this 600 LT, which might be £65,000 cheaper than the Pista, but I'm not sure it's £65,000 less car. I reckon this could be very close. Oh, he's 
Look at him go! Oh, come on! What are we doing? 130, 140. He's pulling away. Ah, 65 grand does buy you a bit more straight line performance. 180 over the line. Okay. It's quicker, but it's not night and day. It's not night and day. Now we know he's got more straight line speed than me. I'm not convinced he's more agile. <laughs> Look at that, a Ferrari, just a great big 700 horsepower drift machine. Connected. The Ferrari's got the speed, but I'm getting more entertained here. Special car, you don't come across these very often. Oh, hasta la pista, baby! This is the Stradale. That's Italian. For road, yes, this is a road car. But really, you want to get it on the track. <laughs> what a little thing! Nought to 60 takes just over three seconds. Flat out, it'll do 174 miles an hour. But in the Stradale, it's how eager it is to get there that really gets your blood pumping. Put your foot down, and it just picks up straight away. Got a little racing car with a number plate. God, the brakes are handy too. And that's because the Stradale is light. Really light. Dallara has built the Stradale almost entirely of carbon fibre. The skeleton and bodywork are carbon fibre, most of the interior, even the cup holder. All in, this car tips the scales at a race car rivaling 900 kilos. And the motorsport know-how doesn't end there. You know what separates proper race cars from just the regular fast stuff? It's not power, it's downforce. This car is all about the downforce. Flat out, the Stradale makes a mighty 800 kilos of the stuff. Those massive scoops behind the wheels, that enormous rear wing, they're manipulating the airflow over the car to literally stick it to the surface of the track. And that means it can do this. You can literally feel the weight of the air pushing the car down. It's like a paper dart. The thing is so sharp. Zamara says that this will produce lateral forces of two Gs. It's race car G-force. It's the kind of G-force that makes you feel like your brain's about to leak out of your ears. Oh, yes. Woohoo! Oh, did I hear you go? Cool, then. Well, look, it goes well. I'm not going to deny that. Let's just take a bit of time. Knock yourself out. So let's just start with the basics. The torque of the motor is great. BMW make a really good engine at the moment. But do you know what? From the moment I got in it, it sounded like a BMW. Here we go, look at this. BMW actually keep their power steering pumps linear all the way through to full opposite lock like that. And that's why this feels, to me, so flipping BMW there. BMW oversteer. That's no not a Toyota oversteer. No bothered. What? No one's bothered about I mean, that. No one's bothered. It's not a Toyota. 
What does a Toyota feel like, Chris? Well, from the inside, it would have a really crazy interior. It'd have a 2JZ up front making hissing and washing noises. It would yeah. sound turbocharged. Do you know what, Paddy? It might be a little bit worse as a car, but it would reek of style. Wowzers. I just think it's a missed opportunity, you know? Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's like finding out that Charles Dickens wants to write the best book ever, and he phones up Emily Bronte and says, can you do this, and then just send me the manuscript afterwards. Yeah, it's wrong. Can you imagine Charles Dickens and Emily Bronte writing a book together? It's a bestseller, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bestseller. Oh, I don't know. It's perfectly good, but it but just... No, no buts, no buts. Is it a good sports car? Yes. God. No, I think there might still be a few milli on the rubber. Knock yourself out, go and do some more skids. Not been sick yet.